Hey YouTube, today we're going to rebuild this uh, motor from a Air Techniques VacStar 80 vacuum pump. This is a uh, two horsepower Franklin electric motor and basically there are two bearings on the sh drive shaft, one at the top and one at the bottom. We're going to replace both of those bearings with new bearings. So uh, to get started, I'm going to remove these two screws just holding on this cover plate. And uh, then I'm going to uh, unbolt it from my um, carrying board. The two bearings that need to be replaced, one is a 6203, as you can see here. And the other one is uh, the... 6304 and, um, and uh, now that I have the top off I'm going to go ahead and take this electrical plate off and uh, then I'm going to unbolt the actual pump from the motor so to take this plate off it's simply removing these three screws all right, we got the inspection cover off. Now with a uh, 9 16 wrench, I'm gonna remove these four bolts holding the pump onto the motor. Okay, here are the shims removed. There's a, a very thin one and a, and a slightly thicker one. And it looks like there was the same on all four, but nevertheless, I marked them one, two, three, four. And I marked where they came off one, two, three, four on the motor. So uh, as a reference point, that's how I'm going to reassemble this. Okay, looking at the bottom side of the pump, we have to remove these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six screws to get to the uh, impeller. Probably not important, but I marked this bottom plate with the case. I'm going to put it on in the exact same position. I think it's symmetrical, but there's no downside to doing that. Now to get this impeller off, it unscrews counterclockwise. And at the same time, you have to hold the shaft from spinning here. So I have a tool. It's actually a motorcycle spark plug wrench from the 1970s, believe it or not. It fits in here very nicely. And I can put a wrench here and hold that and put a wrench on the shaft and I can unscrew this impeller blade from the motor shaft. Okay, here's what I devised to hold the shaft from spinning. I have an adjustable wrench on the end here of the shaft. Let's see. Yep. And then uh, I put a piece, uh, or I put a vice grip on it to hold it from spinning. I'll hold that in place while I use this wrench to take the impeller shaft off. Okay, we got the impeller off. Uh, again, it's simply unscrewed from the end of the motor shaft here. You can see it's threaded here. And... Uh, that's all there is to it. There's an O-ring here too. Um, this one looks like it's in pretty good shape and it's still pretty tactile. Uh, but it's always a good idea to replace those. Now this um, pump body should just separate from the motor by pulling it off. The only thing basically holding it is the friction here on this uh, pump shaft seal. I'm going to burnish this with some uh, like 320 or 400 sandpaper. It's uh, bits and pieces of the seal. And uh, it's, it's very rough. It should be a smooth surface here. All right, it didn't take much. Some 400 sandpaper very lightly uh, cleaned that shaft up very nicely. Now, these two nuts will come off 
and that will take this bottom plate off the motor. I'm going to remove these four bolts. One, two, three, four. Uh, these bolts go all the way down into this base and hold this motor together. All right, now that these four bolts are removed, I should be able to uh, pull the bottom off of this motor. Um, I'm gonna need two hands. You can see it's already loose, but uh, that's next, pull this base off. Maybe uh, gently tap evenly around, but uh, it'll, it'll pry right off. All right, it, it easily slid out. The uh, end cap slid out with the armature. Uh, so now with these two nuts removed, I should be able to take this base plate off. These two nuts are holding a, um, a little uh, clip on the inside that uh, this should slide off and then the bearing to the uh, bottom of the motor is on the base of this. All right, I wasn't able to gently persuade this end cap from coming off the shaft. So I pulled out uh, this universal um, puller and uh, should come right off. Sure enough with the puller, I mean, I almost could tighten that puller with hand. It didn't take much at all but it did need that little extra oomph um, to get it out. So the end cap is off and that exposes the uh, bearing here. And it looks like we're gonna need a puller to get the bearing off the shaft as well. So I'm gonna try the exact same puller. It looks like it'll fit to pull that bearing off, just tighten this guy up and with even pressure, it should slide right off. I'll put a little WD-40 in there just to make it a little easier. Okay, the puller was able to pull this. It was just a press fit. Get this bearing off the shaft. Um, did take a significant amount of uh, torque on the puller to get it but it, it smoothly came off and uh, that's it there so now we have to get to that top bearing which is in the upper lid um, you can't see it I'll get a light and come back all right, with a light, you can see the uh, bearing in the uh, top end of this motor. And there's a little uh, screw holding a retainer clip. I'm gonna try to uh, carefully remove that screw and retainer clip, see if that bearing will slide out without having to take the top off. If necessary, we'll take the top off. All right, I removed the screw and the retaining clip with a pair of needle nose pliers gently uh, took it out. Now let's see if we can uh, get that bearing out of there. Let me flip this motor over. Okay, looking at the top side of the motor, it looks like uh, the bearing is right here and we'll be able to, to push it out with a screwdriver just working our way around. Uh, on the inside here, and it's not a tight fit. All right, if we take a look at the uh, the old bearing here, um, I don't know if we can capture this on the video or not, but this uh, inner ring is a little loose. I, I can I can rock it back and forth. The video is not picking it up. But I, I can rock that back and forth and, and I can't do that on the, on the new one. The new one is solid. What really has me a little concerned is uh, the, the way it fits on the end of the shaft. And it doesn't matter if I do it with the new one or the old one. 
it fits a little loose. So uh, I've run into this before and uh, what I did to fix it and, it and it worked really well is I used uh, Loctite uh, 660 which is designed to um, fit bearings on loose shafts up to so many thousandths of an inch. You start off with the uh, Loctite primer 7649 and then you put on the 660 according to the instructions and uh, again I, I did that on, on a another one of these that I repaired before that uh, I bought rebuilt it lasted about a week I tore it apart and that was the problem it was the loose bearing on the shaft and uh, I used this Loctite and uh, that pump ran for a long time after that so this stuff really works So I cleaned the um, shaft end, top shaft end with uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol. I cleaned the uh, inside of the bearing with rubbing alcohol. And then uh, when I'm ready to assemble this, I'll use this primer, this Loctite 7649 primer and clean them once again. But uh, first I'm gonna put on this uh, lower bearing so I can, you know, be more ready to assemble this when we get there. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the bearing onto the, uh, onto the lower shaft here. I was able to get this bearing on the shaft by uh, gently, evenly tapping a socket that fit around the ring here perfectly. And uh, Gently tapped it on. It took about five minutes. I took my time. So now I'm going to screw the end cap back on with these two little nuts uh, that fit through here and here. And uh, then I will put the bearing back in the top end cap. Then I will apply the... Uh, 7649 primer and the 660 glue on the shaft and put this thing back together. All right, we've got the um, retaining clip reattached. I did have to put a couple of washers under this nut. The shaft stripped. Uh, it was a little rusted out where the uh, nut originally engaged the end of the bolt. So that took care of that. And uh, now I will put this bearing in this end cap from the inside up and put the retaining clip back on, which is right here. Okay, the bearing is back in the motor. Now I've got to get that little clip in there in the screw. Okay, the clip is sitting in the proper place. Now I have to thread a screw down in there. All right, all attached. Thanks to a magnetic screwdriver, I was able to uh, lower that screw into place and secure the bearing. Now what I'm going to do is dry fit this before I put the Loctite on it, just to make sure everything lines up. All right, it slid right in, no problem at all. So um, pull it back out, prime the shaft, prime the inner race of the bearing, put the Loctite 660 on it, put it together and tighten this sucker up. All right, we've got the uh, four bolts back in. Holding the motor together, the end cap's back on, exact position where it was before. And uh, next step is to put the uh, pump housing back on. Let me see if I have a new seal. All right, luckily I did have a couple of these um, in stock, uh, the seals and uh can't remember where i ordered them from but uh here it is out of the box brand new seal and an end piece 
And it looks like that end piece goes right in here. So it looks like I just have to punch that out, punch in the new one, put this piece on, then slide this on. And uh, I use uh, Magic Lube, which is a uh, rubber lubricant that uh, I generously apply to all the rubber parts before assembly. So let me go ahead and <clears throat> punch this out and, and press in the the new um, seal on the top here. All right, I gently tapped a socket and this seal just fell right through. So it'd just be a matter of putting a lot of lube on this one and putting it back up in there. Okay, again, this is the old seal, the new seal, it just pressed right in. This one, this rubber is a little on the hard side, so I think it was time. There's, there's signs of uh, it starting to crumble apart too. So next step is to bolt this onto here. Also, don't forget to put these shim washers back in. I had two in each one. And, uh, and again, I numbered them, so I had washers number three here, so I put them back. And now I'll tighten these bolts up evenly. All right, I will lube this seal up, all the rubber parts on it, and then slide it on. Now with the seal in place, I can screw the impeller back in and uh, tighten it up. Okay, I'll put some magic lube on the O-ring, put this cover back on. I imagine there's a way to measure the gap between this cover and this impeller. And that's adjusted with these shims, but I've always had good luck just putting the shims back on the way they were and uh, putting the cover back on. It's always worked for me. Uh, can't guarantee it, but uh, just looking at it, there is, you know, um, if you zoom in and you look straight down, there's just a little bit of a gap between where the plate mounts flush and the impeller. I don't know what the spec on that is, but uh, it looks okay to me. Okay, got the bottom back on. The only thing left is to put the top electrical cover back on in the hat. Just before we button up the top, I just want to make sure it spins freely. And it feels good, nice and tight. I don't hear any scraping noises, something, you know, rubbing that shouldn't be. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on this uh, electrical plate and the hat. And there you have it. New bearings, new seals. Pretty much that's all there is, unless, you know, there was some other damaged components. That's all there is to rebuilding the uh, pump and motor. Thanks for watching. Hope it helped.